life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The gathering song is Rock of Ages. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Always with you. Let us say together the song of praise. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is counselor. His name, the mighty God, Jesus, my Lord. A child and son is he, eternal father he, the prince of peace to me. Jesus, my Lord. Praise the Creator, Jesus, our Savior. Life-giving Spirit now, in spirit worship Him, love and adore Him. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. The prayer of the day is in your celebrate. If you'd like to pray with me, please do. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, Jean will lead us in the readings. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah. The prophet calls upon Israel to do justice in view of God's imminent intervention to save righteousness and obedience, define who belongs to the Isra Israelite community, not race, nationality, or any other category. This is the reading. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I'll read the psalm. 
and I would invite you to uh, do the appropriate response as found in the celebrant. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let, Let your, your way be, be known upon, upon earth, your, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let, Let the, the nations be glad and sing, sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth, the earth has brought forth its increase. increase. God, God, our own God, God has, has blessed, blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading is a reading from Romans. God has not rejected Israel. Rather, the call and gifts of God are irrevocable, so that while all have been disobedient, God has mercy upon all. The reading follows. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? <laughs> By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday is written in the 15th chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles him. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard you say this? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach? and goes out into the sewer, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles, for out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for he, she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. All right, kids, if you want to come forward, JP is here with us and his friends. I think. He is here. He is here. Okay. Yep. 
Okay. We'll go down to the basement and see if uh, JP's still here. He was now playing with his trains. Hey, kids, JP here. Ha! Well, I got one for you. Here we go. Try to figure this one out. What do you call a very small mother? A very small mother. A mini mom. Get it? Mini, mini, mom. Ha! <laughs> yeah, JP, JP, JP. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Cooper. Cooper's here today. JP, I heard you talking about mums. Well, I had a wonderful mum. She, she wasn't very big, but her heart was so big to, for me and the rest of the pups that she just would do anything for us. She was one that was there all. There's nothing mini about her. I don't care how small. Boy, you really loved her, didn't you? Yes, I did. I can remember one time when I got in trouble. I was just a little pup. You, you big dog, were a little pup. I can't imagine that. Yeah, I was just a little pup, and I went down chasing a squirrel down the street. You did? Yes, yeah, so I chased that squirrel, and I got to the corner, and I made a right, and I kept running after that squirrel. The squirrel got away. Yeah, you weren't fast enough, were you? No, I wasn't. And then, so I turned around and started back, and when I got to the corner, I turned right. Oh, you see the problem? I kept turning right. I turned right, and I turned right, and I turned right. I thought I'd get home and didn't get home because I didn't know where I was, and I was crying, and I was so sad. And, and what happened? What happened? What happened? Well, my mom, she came and found me. She ran out of that house. She knocked on every door. She went around every corner and all the way, and she wouldn't stop until I got home. It was just about dark. Boy, you got a loving mom. Yes, I do. Like the lady in our lesson today, she had a daughter who was very sick, and she came to get Jesus. Yes, she did. And she said, Lord, help my little baby. And he did. He finally did when he saw how great her love for him was and how she believed he had the power to, to heal her daughter. He said, great is your faith. Yes, he did. That was a great mom, too. Well, i got to go. I guess you guys have some good moms out there too, don't you? All right, we got to go. Remember, every day you keep, a, you keep a list of all these Sundays because Pastor Johnson owes you some lollipops. Yes, he does. I think he's up to about 50 by now. <laughs> all right, we got to go. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. I didn't see JP. Did you see JP? No, no. He was down there someplace. He said he was. But, okay. Now, the hymn of the day. He is exalted.
to thank Dwayne for that beautiful music. He brings it into us here every Sunday, and uh, we miss him. <laughs> uh, when, he, when we get to the outside service, we will have him playing for us in person. So hopefully we'll get back outside next week. The common denominator. Who knows what a common denominator is? Common denominator. This, this is one of those magical things that got me all interested in arithmetic when I was a kid. You know, you did every little piece as you learned how to add and subtract and multiply, and you learned these incredible things about numbers. I mean, we knew how to count, but you could use numbers. Then they taught us fractions, and then, then they taught us how to put two fractions together by finding a common denominator. You know, you're about six years old. This sounds very m miraculous. But how do you add like one half to one third? How do you add those two together? Hmm, there's a two at the bottom, there's a three at the bottom, and how do you put two to three together? Do you multiply, do you add them, what do you do? One fifth? No, 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 no. You got to find a common denominator. And so they teach you how to do that, and pretty soon you find out that one half is three sixths. <gasps> wow, and one third is two sixths. <gasps> now, you bring the six across, you put your line there, and two plus three is five, it's five sixths. And you go, wow, maybe I can do that with 942 over 6,869. See, that's how my mind works. That's how my mind that's why I'm an engineer. Well, actually, I'm a pastor, but I was an engineer. So, you know, you need a common denominator, something that allows you to put the numbers together, something that brings everything together, something that is common to the equation. And so I'm, I'm using that picture today to talk about what Jesus is doing. What Jesus is doing on earth is finding a common denominator among the people that will be his followers. In the lesson today, the second half of the gospel lesson, a mother comes to Jesus. Now, she was a Canaanite all right, from the region. She was not Jewish. She was Canaanite. And uh, they don't really get along, to say it the least. And there she is, and, and she has a daughter who's very sick. She said possessed by a demon. She doesn't know what to do. She's probably tried everything to help her daughter to get through this terrible malady that she has. And she finally hears about this man, Jesus, a Jew no less. Remember, Canaanites and Jews don't get along. But she just goes to him. She runs to him and, and says, Lord, help me. Help me. Save my daughter. She's possessed of a demon. And she keeps shouting. She keeps shouting. So Jesus' disciples want her to go away. She's not one of us, and she's being a pest. So she comes to Jesus, and, and Jesus says, you know, I, I've only been sent to the Jews, to the lost children of Israel. And, and she said, no, no, Lord, but please help my daughter, help my daughter. No, no, we can't take what is supposed to be for the children, feed to the children, and give it to the dogs. Now, notice Jesus is not being very nice. Sorry, that's just one time he really fell off the ship. Even Jesus. And she comes and kneels at his feet and says, Lord, but even us dogs, we get the crumbs off the master's table. Notice that, that if, you, if Lord, if you even just give me a crumb, just a crumb, my daughter will be healed. And Jesus turns and says to her four words, Great is your faith. She's only one of two people in the Bible that that phrase is used with. Do you know the second one? Okay, open up your Bibles. No, no, the second one. The second one is the Roman centurion whose servant was very sick, and he came to Jesus and says, Lord, my servant is sick. I want you to come 
and heal him. And Jesus said, no, I'm not. And, and he says, well, just say the word then, because I know how power is. And well, I tell my servant to go, and he goes. I tell this one to go that way. He goes. And you, Lord, if you just say the word, my servant will be healed. And he is amazed. Jesus is amazed at the centurion, this Roman. And he says, great is your faith. Now, never says that to a disciple. Not to Peter, not to James, not to any of the women followers, no one else, just those two people. Great is your faith. He recognizes in them a trust in his power, his strength, and his ability to do the miraculous. Actually, when it comes to the disciples, many times they'll say, O ye of little faith, even though those were his twelve who had been with him for months and months. Great is your faith. Faith is the common denominator Jesus is looking for to create something in this world, to bring people together. Those of faith seems to be what Jesus is looking for and asking for. To put himself in the midst of the world, God has a faith in us to send his only son so that anyone who believes in him may be saved is what Jesus does for us. Putting himself on the line through his life, his death, and his resurrection, Jesus begins to create in us, each one, faith and trust in the God, a God of creation, a God of salvation. It's like he's moving in with us. That's what he's doing. The Lord has sent, God has sent his son into the world to move in with us. There's a doctor, John Rosen. He was in New York City. He was apparently a very well-known psychiatrist. And he served a certain kind of people, catatonic schizophrenics. These people are very, very sick, very sick. Many of them can't speak, can't take care of themselves. <clears throat> and he was the doctor who would not go home. He moved in with them. He took his bed in the middle of their beds. He ate with them at their meals. He was with them and beside them. If they were quiet, he was quiet. They were walking. He was walking beside them. It seems as though he was able to reach them by a kind of understanding. Like somehow they realize that there's someone here who understands what's going on. There's one other thing he used to do to these poor people that could hardly take care of themselves, could hardly brush their own hair. He would hug them, put his arms around them, and hug them, putting himself into their lives. And many of them he brought back to a whole life. Often they said the first words that a person who was breaking through from this catatonia would say to the doctor is, thank you. Thank you. You understood you were with me and beside me. Our Lord Jesus Christ came into this world to give himself to be beside us and to hug us. And no matter what situation, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And it was to all people, people of faith who recognize that God has given and is with them they have faith in his power, and they say, thank you, thank you. You know, we don't do that very well among human societies, you know. I joined a fraternity house when I was in uh, college. And boy, I'll tell you, one thing you had to do in, in a fraternity house, they, they would rush you. They, they always chose the same kind of people as them themselves to move into their house so that we would all be the same. And, and the young ones that came, we all, uh, you know, it wasn't long before they looked just like us. You know, they cut their hair the same. They wore the same clothes. 
they, they acted the same. They ate the same things we did. We were a brotherhood of the same. And we lived apart from others. We had our own little language, you know, strange little words that other people didn't use the way we did. We identified ourselves by becoming like each other. And, and you know, that, that's kind of what humans do, come together in that way. But that certainly is not the common denominator Jesus is talking about. The denominator of faith opens the door to Canaanites, to Centurions, to Syrophoenicians, a woman caught in sin, fishermen on the seashore, tax collectors, good people, bad people, all people, but those who recognize and had faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, they had the common denominator. I'll tell you a little story about a family down by the beach, and they were playing. The children were in the sand and building little sand castles. And down the beach comes a, an older woman. She's kind of working her way down the beach, and as she gets closer, they realize her hair is all messed up. And she doesn't have really nice clothes on, kind of raggedy. And she's kind of talking to herself. And she walks and she leans over and picks something up, you know, puts it in her bag. And, and then she stops a minute and then she walks a little farther. And as she got closer and closer, the parents begin looking at her askance, you know. And they, they tell the children to come over here, <laughs> you know, stay away from her. You know, and, and she comes by, you know, she gets close to the family. She smiles at them and, and they don't smile back. Don't return the greeting. So she goes on her ways and picks up something and puts it in her bag and stops a minute and then goes on. And later on that day, they're down in the village and they ask about this strange woman. And so, oh, that's, that's our retired school teacher. She's retired, yeah. She, she has made, uh, in her retirement, made it her duty, or her job, her, her, her way of life to go down to the beach and pick up any little piece of glass that might cut a child's foot playing in the sand. And she goes down there, and every day she picks up those little sharp pieces of glass and puts it in her bag, and then she says a little prayer for the person that threw that piece of glass in the sand that somehow they might realize that this is a place where children play. Well, the next day, they were down at the beach, and here comes that little lady. She gets closer and closer. And the parents get up and go to their children and take them by the hand and take them over and introduce themselves and tell their children, maybe you can help her, this retired teacher this faithful woman who prays that the world might be better and has found a way in her own way to protect us all. And the children in glee went down the beach with her, picking carefully up little pieces of glass. When we realize that commonality of our faith, that common denominator, the greatness of the faith that really brings us together, the, the way we look, the way we talk, those things don't matter anymore. Our culture, our, our race, our society, our, our language, that doesn't matter anymore. We have the common faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died on the cross, that we might live, that it encourages in us a faith for all people. That's what our church is, is a gathering of all of those who people who would never get together. Nowhere else in human society would a group of people like us get together. But we have that common denominator. Great, we pray, is our faith. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gene will lead us in the prayers. Let us pray. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the, the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and to sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and town, for those who need your healing. We pray especially for Amy, Bill, BJ, Camille, Chris, Clara, Dale, Danielle, Danny, Dave, Elizabeth, Eric, Erica, Fred, Grace, Linda, Mary Jane, Jim, Margaret, Maureen, Melanie and family, Mercedes, Patrick, Pasco, Rick, Ryan, Sarah, Susie, Tammy, Tina, and those we name with our lips and in our hearts. Charlene. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us the gift of discernment. Give us vision to see more clearly what you have in mind for Tree of Life and for each one of us in our daily callings. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our bishops, Elizabeth and William, our pastors, Greg and Jim, Bless them that they may continue to be a blessing to your church. We pray for St. Mark's Lutheran Church and its pastor David, St. Paul's Lutheran Church and its pastor Linda. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love. We offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share the peace with others from a distance. have bread and wine at home, uh, please take it out and you'll be sharing it with each other as we uh, have our communion here online. Let us say together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Indeed, right, right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, 
Almighty God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Let us say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord of heaven and earth, you are full of your earth is full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached the good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to us all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Now if you have your bread and your wine, we will share the meal together. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer after communion. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness, have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. I will have a few announcements before we leave. We did have a program uh, of backpacks uh, that, that we were supposed to be last two weeks uh, getting our little things that Joanne was working going so we could put together six backpacks. Uh, since we're not having that today, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Next week, we're supposed to put our backpacks together, of course. Uh, the way the school is right now, we can probably give them any time. <laughs> so maybe uh, if, if we do, maybe we can get together a little bit somehow, and uh, Joanne can help us uh, to do something anyways. I know people have been looking forward to that and do every year. It's just difficult right now with us apart from each other. Uh, also next week, Jim will be preaching. All right, so be here and get a good sermon finally. You know, 
I want to thank uh, uh, Jim and Marilyn and Garrett and, and, uh, and uh, for all the work they've done with the IT here. Wish I could turn that camera around and show you or the, the, the IT system here and uh, how Jim is all dressed up for this. <laughs> and I uh, want to thank everybody who's come today. I want to thank Gene and, and everybody who set up the table for the Lord, uh, our altar guild and all. Uh, we pray that next week we'll have a good day outdoors, but 9 o'clock we'll be live streaming. And then at 10.30 we'll go outside. If you'd like to come and share that, uh, it won't be streamed outside. It'll just be streamed in here. And uh, we'll be able then to uh, have some fellowship at a distance, as usual. So, if you'll rise, please, for the blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. The sending song is Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Tree of Life, what is our mission? To be faithful children of God, called by grace through Christ, and sharing this gift with Middletown, Odessa, Townsend, and the world. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Be safe.